Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank did with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Main Just caught a touchdown from the Bay The future character that's always been a mystery to me is the wizard. The wizard is is me because he always say I got the answers for everything. Like I can figure it out. I'm gonna find a way to figure it out. And that's what the wizard do. It's like after Purple Rain, I had to go back into the wizard. What do I do? Yeah. How do I release evil when I have to go back into the wizard? Like my crystal ball and come up with these different ideas and brainstorm. That's the wizard. Like in OG Double D, my uh, uncle, rest in peace, though. To Double D, he named me the wizard. He's like, you always gonna figure it out. Okay. He's like, man, you gonna figure it out. No worries. I never be worried about you. You gonna always have a way to figure it out. You the wizard. Shit going on, you know. Come on, man. I'm gonna be ready to ride. On down to the short club, you know, they got a pool party down there, all the NBA boys and everything. We need to be down there. We zoom in on that shit there, all this baseball. He John it was out before Rolex, you know, in the 1600s. Rolex came out in the 1800s. This motherfucker come out in the 1600s. This shit old as baseball, you know what I'm saying? What is that? Yeah, uh, the ground, by the grams, you know what I mean? Nah. Yeah, by the ground. You got to zoom in on that. Tell me no more diamonds in the film. Mouth icy white, you understand me? Yeah, please, please. Come on, man. Country Western, whatever they do. These OGD in the middle of you. Down in Atlanta, making got you rap too. How much this motherfucker cost right here? I want number three, fifty. I'm like, yeah, like. If you smoking this, you blow 50,000. You know, I just blew that again. Boy, I better catch up. I remember it was New Year's. He was in the studio when I did Charles with my nigga Double D was in. I started saying, look, bitch, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Story tonight, a man shot and killed while driving down I-20 during rush hour. He was behind the wheel of one of the world's most expensive cars. Yeah, you know, last time, you understand, they said if you smoke in a Ferrari, you blow 15000 in the 360, right? But when you smoke it at 430, you blow 30000 right? Y'all know the rest, I just blew that. You know, last two cigarettes, I blew 45,000, man. Y'all got to catch up, man. Yeah, I'll sign my own deal. Mm -hmm. What, you talking about that big bag of shit? Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, probably, you know, shit. About three and, you know, three and some chains, something like that, called a Jacob, you know what I'm saying? 140 by itself. And you know, just like I said the first time, man, I got so much of that shit was in the package deal, man. You know, I lost the count. You dig what I'm saying? I had to go back to the jewels, pull out all the papers and, you know, the EGLs and, you know, the clarity and, you know, the truth about it and pull all that. It's just a long story, man. It's a bad story. We man, all the young niggas I come out for right now. Y'all hear that head, nigga? So crank the Ferraris up. You understand? The latest memo, the greatest memo. I understand one of them on this free band package, man. Yeah, the last and oldest memo just showed up. We, we got the seminar. We got the seminar out here, man. man. We got the seminar out here, here, man. Plenty of swag. Prime memo. A little more swag. Hey, man. Listen here, man. This my man. You know, this is the only nigga that can do this shit around me, bro. I don't let nigga pull out shit around me. This the only nigga can do that shit, bro. You know how I play, boy, for real. Take care.
Edition. Scooter. Jay-Z and Kanye ain't the only one talking that crazy shit, 
Free man do that shit too now. Yeah, check it out, the big one too. Yeah, check the orange. Yeah, this ain't no Paul Mitty, Jim. This is true, Jack. Come back and see that motherfucker tick. That was your thing. Come back and see that bitch. That was your tick. One go. Ain't no time to Tell you that right now, if you're rich, you don't know so what that is. Let them get a load of what you got on, man. Oh, it's just Frank Moolah, you but know But there's right? a king right there, ain't it? Little said, little boy said it was cooler. Little yeah. skate he yeah. said Frank Moolah was cooler. Well, I bought me one, you did. <laughs> <laughs> he just said load it now. <laughs> you just told him load it. That's the one tip he talking about. <laughs> Same one. Yeah. Ain't no deals going down. Oh, you see that? Deal ain't oh, made. Yeah, that boy yeah, yeah, look like Meech over there, man. That boy look like Meech. Like you know what I'm saying? That's that shit for a motherfucker. I'm talking sleep. You know what I mean? That's for a motherfucker, man. It's nothing. Nigga, Dilma got flames. 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 Dilma you understand? The latest memo, the greatest memo. I understand one of them on this free band package, man. Yeah, the last and oldest memo just showed up. We, we got the seminar out here, man. We got the seminar out here, man. We got the out here, man. We got the out here, man. Plenty of swag. Prime memo. About a little more swag. Hey, man, listen here, man. Be admired, man. You know this is the only nigga that can do this shit around me, bro. I don't let nigga pull out shit around me. This the only nigga can do that shit, bro. You know how I play, boy. You know I ain't from around here. I'm just down here. Tell them what you do, man. Tell them what you do. 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 That's 11, bro. Oh, that's 11, bro. How many nicks you got to sell to get that nigga? You know what I'm saying? All this shit is before the deal. You understand? Just like I told y'all, big money talk, no half ass. Deuce and quarter slabs, slabs in my trap bag. Commas on these tags. I'm dripping swag. Two Puerto Rican bitches in my player pain. I'm steady getting money. Why these niggas mad? If I'm riding anything, you know it's paper tag. <laughs> I'm talking sleep on this free band shit. Let these folks know you better go on and get your head. <laughs> Double pop yeah, on you. Hey, man. Now to our man, other top story tonight. A man shot and killed while driving down I-20 during rush hour. He was behind the wheel of one of the world's most expensive cars. And Fox News' Justin Gray has the story. tonight in a deadly shooting on I-20 in DeKalb County during rush hour this evening. The victim has died. He was driving an old The license plate car. on this Maybach reads blessed. It's one of the most expensive cars in the world, but this one is covered in bullet holes. The driver shot and killed while heading down I-20 in DeKalb County. It sounded like a bazooka. It, it, it sounded like a, it was a shotgun. I know that. It was four shot. Police say witnesses saw someone in a white SUV shooting at the Maybach during the height of rush hour, then speeding off here on I-20 westbound near the Glenwood exit. There are some preliminary indications that this shooting actually took place um, along the highway. We have a witness who called 9-1 reporting possible gunshots along the highway. In addition to that, we have discovered some shell casings along the roadway as well. At this point, police say they don't know who fired the shots or why. The only thing that we have is a white colored SUV that was last seen in this area and fled the scene. Maybox are popular with rappers and athletes, but the car is being discontinued this year because so few people can afford the $400,000 to $1 million price tag. Witnesses say other drivers or cars could have easily been hit too. And that's the scariest part about it. But then and again, they didn't care. Justin Gray, Fox 5 News.
And police are not releasing the victim's name. They are looking for anyone with information on that white Channel SUV. Ashley Swan is live at Grady Memorial Hospital with the clues investigators are using to find the man's killer. Ashley. Aaron, that man was brought here to Grady, but sadly did not survive. He was driving a Maybach, a rare luxury car that sells for upwards of $400,000. Tonight, police are trying to figure out who he was and find the person witnesses saw shoot at him from a white SUV. That's how an unidentified witness describes what he heard moments before this rare black Mercedes Maybach valued at several hundred thousand dollars came to a stop along I-20 westbound at Glenwood Avenue. DeKalb police say drivers also called from the interstate to report actually seeing the gunfire coming from a white SUV in the middle of rush hour. Well, we potentially could have had an extremely dangerous situation. An off-duty Atlanta firefighter pulled over at the side of the stop sedan and found a man inside shot multiple times. He was taken to Grady Hospital in critical condition, but later died. At this point, we are still looking into the background of this victim and trying to positively identify the victim. Several lanes of I-20 were shut down as police investigated the crime. With the MyBox windshield wiper still going, onlookers like Daniel Chapman wondered about the person who could have afforded such a car. I guess it had to be somebody might have important to be driving that one. And who would have shot him as he drove down the road? It could have been just like um, Rose Rage, but I doubt that. I don't think they'll just shoot like that. You know, people doing strange things nowadays, and, you know, it's one to chalk it up, you know, what the world's coming to. Only 3,000 of these newer Maybox have been sold. Police aren't saying at this point if they believe the car played any role in this crime. We are live in downtown Atlanta with a lot of weather. Ashley Swan, Channel 2 Action News. I'm not exactly sure how many people are still around from the beginning. Now, I know it's quite a few because I still see y'all downstairs in the comment box getting active. Now, if you was there back in 2016 and you happen to be listening to this video, y'all head to the bottom and stamp it. On my kids, I could never forget my day ones. And if you was there then, you probably was there when the channel got completely wiped back in 2018. Now, at that time, there were some stories that I felt like I told and didn't tell again. There's some stories that I forgot that I told. And then there's some stories that I just felt like there's no way I could be running a channel or a series titled Mob Ties without certain people being represented. And today we are covering one of those people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know the situation. It's your comrade Popalot. Salute the almighty mob. Now, this story is going to start in Memphis, but it's going to take us across the country, driving the shit that you only see the rappers in on some big player shit. We're going to fuck it up in Miami for a little bit, then link up with some young niggas from the A getting bands like they free. Though he wouldn't get a chance to drop an album and probably wasn't even a rapper for real, he's still going to be one of my favorite personalities that I've been introduced to by the rap game. And that person that I'm speaking on is going to be a guy by the name of James D. Lowell, better known as the Swag Chief, the legendary OG Double D. And just doing this episode, it's still kind of hard to believe that it's been over a decade since Double D was murdered on I-20 in Atlanta. Now, if any of y'all remember OG Double, it's probably memories of him shitting. Like, you might have stumbled across a video of him pulling out an assortment of 50 designer loafers out of a closet and not no sneakers, nigga. This is player shit. Loafers. Where in that same video, he would show off a closet of designer belts talking about these Louis and Gucci's. And if not for that, definitely probably for the few all-time classic times where he would drop the value of luxury vehicles, puffing Newports in them shits, and with a decade passing since his murder and his homicide still unsolved, there's still questions in general surrounding not only his death, but also his life. And though most people, and even me early on, would associate OGWD with Atlanta, it really starts in Memphis. And I'm not quite sure when, but at some point in time, OGWD would relocate to a place that's well known for people stunting, putting their shit on Front Street. 
Miami. Now, not much is known about OG Double D's personal life as when you search his name on the internet, searches pop up like, how did OG Double D get his money? Now, though he would never say it, and it had never been proven, if you read through the chatter on the internet with some good glasses through social media websites like Instagram, Twitter, and even places like Reddit, you would see people chiming in, alleging that OG Double D probably got his money out of Chick or that hustle and flow money, if you know. With one anonymous commenter saying, I remember when Double D had them hoes in Miami Beach. And just like his life, which is pretty much a mystery, his death is not too much different. In April of 2013, OG Double D would be riding in a Maybach that he had just purchased a few weeks earlier on I-20 westbound near the Glenwood Avenue exit when what is described as only a white SUV pulls up alongside of him and opens fire on his vehicle with the shooting having all the makings of a hit and leads being scarce. His family would explain how on that very same day, he would travel to South DeKalb Mall twice, wondering if maybe he had been followed after a trip of shopping. Within the first few months of the murder, there would be no news or even updates as far as a suspect or even a motive. And just after a year or so, right when it looked like it was starting to become a cold case, Authorities would announce the arrest of a 25-year-old man by the name of Christopher Dyer. They wouldn't say much about Dyer other than the fact that they believed that he was the one that pumped nine shots into that Maybach, killing OG Double D. At the time when the media would announce his arrest, according to the Cal Police spokesman, Captain Stephen Four at the time, Dwyer was incarcerated on another charge in a Marion Correctional Institution in Ocala, Florida, where he had been serving time on the 2012 burglary and grand theft auto charges in Volusia County. They would state that he was waiting extradition on the murder charge, but with very few clues, homicide detectives were still investigating the fatal shooting and were still asking anyone for information about the case to contact Crime Stoppers. No outlets would ever mention what would make the police suspect Christopher Dyer for the murder of OG Double D. And I would search high and low and I couldn't find anything about a trial, a verdict, or even a case associated with the murder of OG Double D, associated with Christopher Dyer. But I'm willing to almost 100% sure say that he never faced charges associated with the murder of OG Double D, with my main proof to back up that statement being a willful obstruction of law enforcement officers, a misdemeanor charge, as well as an aggravated assault charge that he would end up being booked for just eight years after OG Double D's murder on October the 9th, 2021 in a situation where they pretty much really described him as just menacing his girlfriend. But with him being named as a suspect and no charges really being filed, the rumors would really begin to swell about OG Double D's death with people saying shit out of a movie, like it was a hit from the higher ups and other people saying pretty much anything with talks. It has something to do with some jewelry or some watches, or probably even the most outlandish to me, or probably the most outlandish to me, with people saying that his murder might have been a mistaken identity killing, having the alleged killers mistaking him for Rick Ross, being that he was driving a Maybach. As wild as it may sound, I guess I see a little bit how they might come to that conclusion as it was 2013, and that would coincide with the time that Rick Ross had the big rift with the GDs, especially the ones in Atlanta. But I feel it's just like I stated earlier, just as much as unknown about his life, his death is just as mysterious. 
Y'all get down in the comment box and let me know y'all best memory of OG Double D. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong. All of that, y'all tapping with me directly. Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next play, y'all know how we rocking. Salute the almighty mob.